Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post nail tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8.15 a.m. Central Time. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I am officially back to my normal usual schedule. I was a little out of the loop for a little bit, but I am back. I did already post another video, so if you missed that one, make sure to go check it out. I did share with you guys an awesome nail hack that I feel like saves us a lot of time as nail techs and nail artists, so make sure you guys check that out. Getting right into today's video, I am starting off by prepping my client's nails. These are hands you guys have never seen before. <laughs> she is actually my sister. I did mention to you guys that I had family in town if you guys follow my community posts on YouTube. So that's why I was a little MIA for a little while. But we are able to share this set with you guys. I always try to do my family's nails whenever I'm around them. I feel like they appreciate my work, so I wanna be able to do their nails for them. And I don't know, it's like a really good kind of like bonding moment whenever I do their nails. So I am starting off by using my Kiara Sky Rechargeable E-File. I have her at 4,000 RPMs, usual speed for my prep work. Along with that, I'm using the Profiles Backstage mandrel bit and their purple sanding bands in medium grit these are my favorite ever since i started using them so highly recommend them if you guys are looking for good sanding bands they are super fine which is always a plus as an tech. you want to make sure you take care of your clients nails and you do not want to cause any damage to them so i'm just going in gently buffing off that shine and then we're going to be moving on to our next prep portion which is the cuticle area once i'm done buffing off that shine we are using the needle bit which is my favorite it helps to get into those hard to reach areas that you might have missed with the mandrel bit because it's so skinny it allows you to fully remove that dead skin that you might have not removed with the mandrel bit so definitely recommend this one i feel like it has helped tremendously with my lifting issues that i had previously to discovering this bit so i'm gonna go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails I'm going in with my cuticle ball bit. This is going to gently remove any dead skin from the cuticle area without having to do any trimming or nipping off. I've talked about it in every single one of my videos. It deeply terrifies me to cut any skin off, so I'd rather just gently buff it off. She didn't have any major cuticle growth, so it didn't really take me long to do this, honestly, and it was very little amount of work. I honestly was just buffing around the nail to see if I got any dead skin off. But I have now moved my e-file up to a speed of 5,000 RPMs. I have found that that works the best, especially with any stubborn little areas. So if you are struggling with this bit, try to move it up just one tiny speed. Once we're done prepping the natural nail, I am going in and applying the tips. These are the Not Polish Extra Long C-Curve Tips. I love them. They are full sculpted, pre-shaped in the perfect square in my opinion. And I was so excited that she asked for square. I've been loving it, especially with really long nails. They look so good in my opinion. So I'm going ahead and applying that with a Young Nails Brush on Glue. It is my all-time favorite glue. I feel like the easiness of just having a brush and being able to apply it wherever you need to just has me sold. And I feel like I'm never going to switch from brush on glue now. I'm just going ahead and firmly pressing them into the tip of her nail. And because these are C-curve tips, you want to make sure you hold down the sides. If you notice, they are slightly lifted. This is going to help make sure the nails last on there. You don't want any areas not attached correctly to the nail. Now I'm taking my nail tip cutters and lightly trimming them. She did want to keep most of the length, which excited me so, so much because you guys know I love my long, long nails. And I feel like you guys appreciate them as well. So I'm going ahead and just very gently trimming off a little above the number. 
and then i'm gotten pretty good at eyeballing it so i'm just going ahead and trimming all of them without comparing once you get the hang of it you can pretty much eyeball it and you don't have to compare fingers so i'm just going ahead and finishing that off very quickly I'm taking my hand file. This is a Tammy Taylor Peel and Stick file. I'm going in and filing the sides just to make sure everything is nice and flush to her natural nail and that the sides of the nails are perfect. And then I'm going in and filing the tip as well. Whenever you trim nails, they can be a little bit slanted. They can round a little bit. You just want to make sure that everything is nice and crisp. I prefer to do this now than later just because I feel so much better during my acrylic application when everything is perfect since the beginning. And I feel like it minimizes the amount of filing you have to do at the end as well. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that. And then we're going to be moving on to our next step. I am going in and gently blending the tip to the natural nail. Again, using my sanding band. And I'm just doing this specifically on this set of nails because I know I'm going to be doing some acrylic nail art along with ombre and I just want to make sure that my base is the perfect surface for my application if I'm just going in with a simple nude color I don't bother and I don't blend the tip so just a quick little disclaimer I'm very very quickly dehydrating the nail and cleaning the nail from any dust with a lint-free wipe and some swipe and then I'm going in quickly with the triple X bond from not polish and priming her natural nail I'm doing two coats on all 10 fingers just to make sure that she doesn't get any lifting. So she did want to do some very bright and fun nails. So I'm swatching some blues for her because she mentioned she wanted to do blue. And then she wasn't sure if she wanted to do yellow or green. I honestly was the one that suggested lime green because I feel like this combo is such a pretty combo. The ombre effect with these two colors looks so good in my opinion. So I kind of may have peer pressured her into getting lime green. <laughs> She's never really gotten bright colors every time I've done them for her. They've been pretty neutral. So when she said bright, I was like, we're going bright. <laughs> so we're going ahead and using this lime green from Not Polish. And I'm taking this really pretty blue color and we're going to be ombre those. So I started off with a good sized bead of acrylic as my base with the green. And then I'm just gently applying the blue color over top and very, very lightly and easily blending those two together. Whenever you have colors that are so alike, I'm not going to lie, the ombre effect is so much easier to achieve, but the product also plays a huge role in that, and I've mentioned it before. If you have very stiff products, you are going to struggle, but because not polished, products are super buttery, and they just blend so good, it makes life a little bit easier. So I'm going ahead and doing an ombre on the pinky. We're going to be doing a full finger of that lime green color on the middle finger and then another ombre nail onto the thumb. For today's video, I am using the Not Polish Acrylic Brush in the size 12. It's been my favorite. I feel like a size 12 now in my opinion is a really good size to work with. And I am also using their acrylic monomer for the video. So basically all not polished products. I'm going ahead and finishing that application. I'm just going in in sections. I want to make sure that my application is nice and even. So I went in at the tip, then the middle of the finger, and then we moved up to the cuticle area. And as you can see, very, very effortlessly, I am applying that green. I love the vibrant color. I am so excited that we got to do this color combo.
Now for our accent fingers, we are gonna be doing like a clear background and I'm adding some chunky butterfly glitters that match the colors we're using. So I'm using this really pretty holographic teal butterfly glitter. And then I'm also adding a more translucent one. So I'm basically just going in sections and layering them. I go ahead and apply the smallest amount of acrylic so that the product sticks. And then I work my way up into the cuticle, adding some more of that iridescent butterfly glitter. And then I'm adding just a very small amount of lime green ones, kind of randomly on there. So I'm using the blue as my background and then adding accents of that green. And I'm kind of ombre them down towards the tip. The majority of the tip is going to stay clear. So it's like trickling down from the cuticle area to the tip. And we're gonna be repeating that on the index finger as well. I'm only showing you guys the process on this hand because we're doing the exact same thing on the other hand. So again, add a little bit of clear so that the product sticks and then I'm layering them on as I go. I prefer to do it this method because you don't get a super bulky nail. A lot of the time if you go in with your full base clear, I feel like you just get a really chunky nail and I love to have mine on the thinner side my clients appreciate it as well so again i'm just adding hints of that green butterfly glitter and then if i feel like it's not going to stick i go ahead and just add the smallest amount of clear again and then go ahead and stick the glitter Once we're done with our base design, I am going in and encapsulating these nails. I want to make sure that I protect my acrylic base, especially the ombre nails. And of course, you want to absolutely encapsulate those glitters and add the thickness that you need for this length of the nail. These tips, I feel like you don't really need to add an apex because they are C-curved. They do a really good job of holding the strength. They are also very thick. I've never had issues. My clients like my thin nails. So as long as they don't ask for a thicker nail, I try to do them all basically the same. I feel like every nail tech also gets their own style as they've been doing nails and your clients like you for your own style, if that makes sense. So I'm going ahead and making sure that I'm applying a good amount of clear and really pressing that into the glitter. You want to make sure that it's fully encapsulated by pressing it in and pushing it in very firmly so that it gets into all the creases and crevices that have occurred from that chunky glitter. And then I'm trying to get a little bit of clear that I accidentally got underneath the nail. Since these nails are going to be clear, you want to make sure that the underneath is nice and clean. So I was trying to get that at that point. I'm just going to be adding the thickness that I need for this nail and then we're gonna go ahead and encapsulate the rest of the nails. Same process, just kind of adding clear acrylic wherever I feel it is necessary. And then we're going to be moving on to our filing.
Now I went ahead and gave it a little bit of time. Now I'm doing the little tapping test to make sure everything is nice and dry. And then I realized that I had actually worked on the opposite hand first. So that one would be a lot more on the dry side. So I'm going in and using my Kiara Sky e-file for this step. I have now moved my e-file speed up to 9,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using my Kiara Sky 5-in-1 bit. This one is medium grit in the color rose gold. They have tons of colors available and they also have them available in fine and coarse grit. It is my favorite. I talk about it all the time, but for whatever reason, their 5-in-1 bit in comparison to all the other 5-in-1 bits that I've used is my favorite. I do not know what it is. I honestly have no idea what the difference is, but I will say they are my favorite. So I'm going in around the cuticle to make sure that everything is nice and flush. Then filing vertically up and down, I feel like you get better grasp of the nail and your hand piece. If you go vertically up and down, you don't risk going sideways and skipping off of the nail. And I just feel like you get most of the surface done that way a lot quicker. I'm going to go ahead and finish filing this and then we're going to move on to our hand filing. I'm going back in with my hand file just to make sure everything is super crisp. No matter how perfect you apply your acrylic, you still want to go in one last time and fully file it into shape. You're going to realize that even though you think they look perfect, once you file, they look so crisp. The shape is super, super straight and just perfect. I feel like this is my favorite part. I don't know why, <laughs> but I'm going in on the sides very very gently making sure that i'm really holding her finger still if you apply too much pressure on one side and not hold the other side in place it can cause discomfort on your client and you want to make sure they are comfortable at all times i'm going to go ahead and finish that on the rest of the nails obviously as mentioned in every single one of my videos you want to flip the hand around to look at the nails from the client's perspective i did go ahead and do that but Whenever I'm working on a client, it definitely gets out of frame from the camera. So I don't really get to show you guys. But if you guys are curious as to what I'm talking about, you can look at any of my other videos that show that step. Uh, more than likely, it's going to be all of my practice hand videos. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish that off. And then we're going to be moving on to the fun stuff.
Now we are cleaning the surface of the nail with a lint-free wipe and some swipe. You can absolutely have your client go and wash their hands, but I just prefer this method because they're still in my chair. It's not gonna cause them to be over there for a really long time. So I go ahead and just clean it with a lint-free wipe and some swipe. Now I am adding a little bit of Young Nails brush on glue and we're gonna be adding some crystals. She is doing Accent 3D Butterflies. So we're gonna be using these teardrop crystals as the body and then I'm just scattering a few small AB crystals around. And then we're gonna be doing the actual 3D nail art with some acrylic. Now it is important that you let the glue fully dry before you go in with your acrylic or else you might glue the bristles and then you're gonna have to take some time and try to get that glue out. So make sure you fully let it dry and then go in with your 3D nail art. So for this step, I'm using Ice Queen from Not Polish, and my 3D nail art brush is from Amazon. I'm using very small beads of acrylic, and I'm not quite sure if I showed it for this bead, but I lightly tap the back portion of my brush onto a napkin so that it drains out a little bit of the liquid. I have found that if you work with a little bit on a dry side bead, you're gonna get the better effect of 3D nail art. I personally have gotten pretty good on my speed when it comes to 3D nail art, so I like to work with the dryer bead. Of course, if you are new and struggling, you need a little bit more time, by all means, do not tap off the excess monomer. You want to keep that monomer in your brush because the more monomer you have in your brush, it's gonna give you a little bit more of a wet acrylic to work with which gives you more time. So I'm just going in and adding an even smaller bead and we're basically doing like the flower petals that I've showed you guys before. Pressing the inside of it, kind of forming it into a petal and I just do one bigger one on top and then one smaller one on the bottom. So I'll let you guys watch this portion of it. I feel like it's really hard to explain this kind of stuff. And then we'll be getting on back with our top coat. It's too late now to turn around and back again. I made my bed and now I lay my head in it. I'm sorry I'm not perfect, but I knew that I wouldn't be. It's for the best, you know the worst in me I'm no good at being good, but I never said I was And I feel misunderstood, cause I'm trying hard to love I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my actions, they haunt me Broken plans, so we can start again. Wanting down a second chance, I'm too selfish for that. I let you fall again, now that you know that. I'm no good at being good, but I never said I was. And I feel misunderstood, cause I'm trying hard to love. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 
I'm going in with my top coat. This is Not Polish Matted. Absolutely by far my favorite matte top coat. It leaves everything super velvety feeling and the matte stays on the entire time. So I'm adding a thin coat of that on the surface of the nail, making sure that I'm evenly coating that surface. Very, very thin, nothing crazy. Sometimes you can get a streaky effect if you add a little bit too much of that top coat. So make sure you are evenly distributing that. For the accent nail, I'm very, very carefully going around the butterflies and the crystals. I don't want to get any of that top coat on specifically the crystals, but as well the 3D nail art. It can take away from the texture, and I love the texture that the brush kind of creates on 3D nail art. So I'm just going in very, very gently, honestly not trying to be perfect with it because the acrylic itself already is matte so just a quick little pointer on that and I'm gonna go ahead and finish that pop that in the light for a full one minute I like to put it in there for two minutes just to be safe once we are out of the light I'm adding some cuticle oil this is from profiles backstage my favorite it smells so so good I'm making sure that I'm not getting it on the acrylic because it can leave a shiny cast on matte top coat so I'm basically rubbing it in upwards towards the rest of her fingers so that I avoid the nail very, very gently, as you can see. And it soaks right in, so you don't really have to rub it in a crazy amount. But that basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching and being patient with me. I will see you guys later. Bye.